In this video, we're going to talk a bit about XPath and compare it to CSS. Uh, both are syntaxes for matching elements within a web page, and we're going to talk a little bit about why one might make more sense than the other in certain situations, <clears throat> and also just some of the syntactical differences between them. So I've got Google open here again, and we're going to pop into our dev tools as we've been doing. <clears throat> And we'll go ahead and focus on uh, this input element um, that we've been focusing on a little bit in the beginning. Um, so if you remember, I pointed out some of these shortcut methods that um, Google Chrome has for targeting things. And we've been targeting this input using CSS. Uh, so something like this, targeting the name and returning it. Um, so for using XPath, um, we're going to use a similar shortcut method. Um, there is also a formal way to do it in JavaScript, but it's a bit ugly. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that these shortcuts um, exist in the browser. Uh, and again, just to reiterate, XPath is just another method that allows you to target an element. Um, in, in our case, we're you know, approaching this as a tester who's creating you know, automated browser tests. Um, and for the most part, the functionality is pretty similar, but there's a few nice additions that XPath has, and I'll touch on at least one of those. So the shortcut method for targeting XPath is a dollar sign and an X. Um, so pretty easy to remember. And for starters, the, the syntax is gonna look really similar. Um, one thing off the bat that we'll do is we'll start with this slash slash, uh, and that basically tells the selector to look for this element anywhere in the DOM. So it doesn't have to be the root element. It can be anywhere. CSS kind of assumes that by default, but with XPath, we're gonna add this slash slash and you don't have to start your selector this way, but most XPath selectors will start this way because it's just generally makes a lot of sense to look for something anywhere in the DOM. We use the same approach for putting the element type in. So in this case, an input, and you can see just like it did in our previous videos when searching for just an input, we've got you know, eight different elements here and it's gonna um, match them just the same way uh, the document query selector all matches them. The bracket syntax is also the same for matching attributes. The only difference is that in front of the attribute name, we're gonna put an at symbol. So if I'm looking for the name, I'm doing this. And so you can see these syntaxes are really, really similar. The only differences here are this double slash in the beginning and the at symbol. And things like that are the case throughout the syntaxes um, or throughout the differences. They're generally just pretty subtle things of like one extra character being used or a different character being used. Um, so I'll go over just a couple of the methods that we talked about in past videos and, and show you what those look like in XPath. Um, so of course, this is the attribute. Um, this is the attribute selector. Uh, one thing I had mentioned that you can do with XPath is, um, excuse me, with CSS, is that you can remove uh, this element type, right? So I don't need necessarily an input element anymore. I just want an ele element with this name. You can do that in XPath as well, but instead of removing it completely, you're going to replace it with a star. So that is equivalent of saying the star is like, give me any kind of element. I don't care. It just should match this attribute. So again, just a subtle difference. Um, hierarchy uh, works pretty similar. In um, CSS, we talked about using a space. So here I'm looking for a div element. Uh, and then inside of that, we'll just add this back just for a little bit of clarity, I'm looking for an input element with this name. And this space uh, gives a lot of flexibility that can be anywhere inside of it. If I do this angle bracket, now I'm making it more specific and I'm saying this needs to be an input directly inside of a div. In this case, this input happens to be directly inside of this div. So that finds, that finds the element. Um, in XPath, it's gonna look like this, so we'll add this back. I'm gonna do the div, and the equivalent to the space is gonna be another double slash. So that's basically saying, you know, find this div anywhere, and then anywhere inside of that, find this input. Um, so in XPath, the double slash is the same as a space, and if I wanna do this syntax with the angle bracket to make it more specific and say it needs to be an input directly inside of a div, uh, I just do one slash. 
And so that one slash is the same as this CSS angle bracket. Um, so I generally tend to shy away from using these two things because they tend to make for really rigid selectors, but the equivalent's there and it's easy, easy to use. Um, so we talked a little bit last time about partial selector. So that was, um, let's see if I can remember one. We talked about looking for an input uh, with just part of its value. So here we're looking for this search button that contains Google in the value, and we're doing this star equals. Um, XPath has something similar. It's gonna look like this. We'll go back to having the input. Um, and we're gonna do contains. So it's got this contains method. And this is gonna be important in the next thing I'll show you because it's, it's really useful and it kind of goes a step beyond what CSS can do. But this, this contains method takes two parameters. The first is the attribute we're looking at. In this case, that's value. So I'm gonna do at sign value. And then I'm gonna match what I'm doing above and do Google. Uh, and we've got the same thing. So looks a little bit different. Here we're doing the star equals to, to match it, and here we're doing contains. Um, XPath has also got uh, options that match the um, dollar sign equals and the caret equals, which is like starts with or ends with, and those just look like this. So instead of contains, you actually write starts with um, or ends with. Uh, so CSS is a little bit shorter here, and Sometimes that's nice when you're writing and managing selectors. If it's clear to you what this means, it's always nice to have just a more condensed selector. Um, but this more verbose option is can be nice too. It makes it a little bit more clear if somebody comes in and doesn't really know what the dollar sign equals or caret equals means. Uh, this can help make it a little more clear. Um, this contains method and these starts with are also really useful for matching based on the contents, the text contents of an element. And that's something that we haven't talked about because CSS doesn't have an option for doing this. Um, so let's talk about um, what I mean. So up here, we've got this about link, right? And maybe I wanna click this link or make sure it's present. Um, how am I gonna target it? Well, I take a look and I look at this class and I'm like, you know, this class name is pretty ugly. Um, it's got this, href, this is basically the URL that it's linking to. Uh, I could match that, but that's pretty long. I could do a partial selector and just look for like about.google, not so bad. But what would be really nice is if I just look for this about text, I just say, find me the link that says about. Um, CSS can't do that, but XPath can. Uh, and the way you do that is like this. So do our slash slash, we'll do our uh, a for our anchor link attribute and then um, uh, or element type rather and then inside of here we'll do this contains and instead of passing in an attribute so like instead of like at href or something like that we're going to do text uh, and the parentheses and that's kind of like a function that's going to grab the text and put it in here and then we're going to say we want the text uh, that contains about um, you can also look for it directly. So you could actually drop this whole contains even, be a little bit more specific, and we'll just say text equals about. Um, and that's really nice because look how clear the selector is. You know, give me the link where the text equals about. Um, that's really nice. So um, that's not something, unfortunately, that CSS offers, and it's a really useful tool, especially when you're doing these, uh, creating these automated tests because it's nice and clear to everyone uh, what it's doing, and oftentimes it allows you to uniquely um, identify the element because you know the link labeled about or the button with Google search or whatever um, makes for a nice, simple selector. Um, most tools will let you do both. They might have different methods. Ghost Inspector lets you do both, and um, we just kind of are able to figure out uh, which one you're using. So you can mix and match these pretty nicely. So um, we'll go ahead and do a, just a quick test to put, um, put some of this knowledge to use here. We'll create a Google test started on google.com. So we'll add, let's say, a CSS 
step first. So maybe we want to click the search field. Um, we'll do this the same way we've done in the past, input name equals Q, right? So there's a step that's using um, CSS. And then let's check for that about link. Um, so let's use an element is visible assertion. So that's going to look for the element instead of interacting with instead of interacting with it. And um, as I start to type this in, Ghost Inspector is going to recognize that, hey, this looks like a looks like an XPath selector. Um, so we'll just do the same thing we did in the browser and we'll say the text is going to equal about. Um, and now, so this step is going to leverage uh, an XPath selector. So I'll save this. Got to move my video again. Give this a quick run. Um, and that's going to use CSS in the first step and XPath in the second. We've got a nice resource on the website that lets you convert back and forth. Uh, and uh, so you can compare if I want to do this in CSS, this is what it looks like versus XPath. Uh, in terms of what you should use and when, uh, it's really up to you. Um, CSS is sometimes a little bit, uh, like I mentioned in the first video, it's a little bit more common and uh, folks recognize it a bit more. Uh, but XPath is sometimes more powerful. And I mentioned this text feature, but there's also a couple other features that it has that CSS doesn't, and that can be really useful. So what I usually do is I tend to skew towards CSS, and then when I need XPath for a step, when it makes sense to match by the content or do something more complicated, um, I'll use XPath. Um, here our test came back and finished, and if we watch the video, we can see it. I'll click on the input, and then up here it's asserting that uh, about link and making sure that's present. So use these things, um, you know, in situations that make sense. Um, and uh, we'll continue on and keep uh, fleshing out all the different more advanced methods that are available when you're using these syntaxes.